Good morning, everybody. I hope that you're having a wonderful day. Uh, so we're going to be diving right into our actual content. Today we're going to be talking about influential documents. These are documents that influenced our Constitution. We're going to be looking at three. We have the Code of Hammurabi, the Magna Carta, and the English Bill of Rights. So first we're going to talk about the Code of Hammurabi. As you can see, it is quite an impressive statue. It actually stands eight feet tall and contains 272 laws. It was made in Mesopotamia in 1754 BC, so real long time ago. This is how it influenced us. It recognizes the ideas of basic rights. Before the Code of Hammurabi, it was almost like uh, an eye for an eye, if you will. So if you killed my slave, I kill your slave, that's it. That's all there is to it. But you can see how that would escalate things because no one is ever really satisfied whenever they're the last ones to lose something. They always want to take something from something else. So it didn't work out. Hammurabi was a king that was like, all right, so let's go ahead and let's try to think of everything that could go wrong. You know, you killed some person that is of a higher statue, then you're probably going to lose your life. If you killed somebody that was of a lower, lower uh, status, then you're probably going to get a pretty heavy fine. You might even lose one of your people of a lower status. Because let's face it, 1754 BC, they had slaves. That's all there is to it. So this is where we start to get the basic idea of rights, that just because you want something of mine doesn't mean that you can have it. It's actually one of the first times that laws were written for everyone to have access to. Before this, they would write down laws and somebody would come out, hear ye, hear ye, I mean, obviously they didn't speak English, but somebody would come out, deliver the laws, and you're just supposed to remember them. They weren't really posted for anywhere, like anywhere for anyone to see. These were chiseled onto a huge statue all the way around. And so everyone had access to it. Lastly, the laws were transparent and specific. The more specific a law, the easier it is to follow. The more transparent a law, that means that you, you know what you're doing. Whenever I'm driving 45 miles an hour down Main Street, I know I'm breaking the law because it says speed limit 35, right? That's transparent. I know exactly what law I'm breaking. So that is uh, three ways that it influenced our Constitution. Here are pictures of the Code of Hammurabi. It was written in uh, cuneiform. You can see it's actually quite a beautiful language. All these slides are going to be posted on Schoology, so you're going to have access to them. No worries. At the top, this is a sculpture of Hammurabi delivering his rules, his laws, to a scribe that is writing them down for him. So, pretty heckin' cool. Alright, next we're going to talk about the Magna Carta. Okay, so it's a little bit sooner, a little bit uh, newer, more modern. It was written in 1215 AD in England. And I'm not going to lie, it's one of my favorite documents because this is the first document that ever restricted power on government. Basically, with King James, they were like, if you don't follow these laws, then we're going to fire you. And it set up ways in order to do that. <clears throat> so it restricted the power of government. It also presented the idea that the king could be fired. If you're not doing your job, why would we keep you? If you're not doing what we're telling you to do and you're not doing what's best for your country, we'll fire you and we'll get a new king. I absolutely love that. And this is one of the first times that citizens are given actual rights, that the king cannot violate the rights because they are rights of the citizens. They weren't given by the king. So you can't take something that wasn't given by you pictures of the Magna Carta. Let's face it, it's a piece of paper. It's not nearly as impressive as the Code of Hammurabi, but still very important. The last one we're going to talk about is the most modern one, uh, even though it was written in 1689. It's not super modern, but it's the English Bill of Rights. It was, of course, in England. Otherwise, it wouldn't be called the English Bill of Rights. And it was super influential. So it defined civil rights in England 
even more than the Magna Carta. The Mag Magna Carta was just the first step, but the English Bill of Rights took it so much further. It restricts the power of the king further because he still had too much power. And it actually started to define the rights and the limits of Parliament. So that would be like our Congress, which is made up of the Senate and the House of Representatives, that they have rights, they also have limits. So this is where we start to see uh, additional limits in other parts of government, not just the king. And it includes things like no cruel and unusual punishment, uh, right to protect yourself with weapons, laws against unreasonable taxation. Any of this sounding familiar? It should, because we straight up stole parts of it. So we, we didn't even cite our source, you know, because America, that's why. Here are pictures. Once again, it's just paper, but very influential paper. This is uh, King Charles and Queen Mary of Orange. Um, they were the ones that this law, that these uh, Bill of Rights were drawn up against because they were really awful monarchs. So those are the documents that have influenced our Constitution. Next, we're going to be talking about people that have uh, influenced our Constitution. If you have any questions, you can always email me, message me on Schoology, or text me on Remind 101.